Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over how to use DecalChamp. Um, once you've downloaded DecalChamp, um, it would be a zip file, so just unzip it. And there's a project in there you can uh, double click to open up and you'll end up exactly on this screen where I'm at now. Uh, of course you can take the DecalChamp uh, project folder and migrate it to an existing project as well. So I'm going to jump straight in. I'm just going to go. There is a demo uh, folder of demo scene in here. There's not a lot in there. You can see it's uh, it's all empty, but it's really just a, a, a area you can play around and get used to the tool. Uh, there's also a, a decal already in here. The way we would actually uh, implement uh, decals into the scene is in the main de uh, decal folder, uh, decal champ folder. There's a blueprint. This is the the actual decal controller itself so I'm going to put that in the scene and just rotate that uh, 90 degrees let's just get rid of the uh, grid so we don't need that uh, righty so here's our decal uh, right now you can see it's empty I'm just going to make a bit of room over the side up here so the first thing uh, that's uh, worth looking at is a decal setup at the top I've pre-saved some settings, so uh, and this is uh, what I refer to as profiles. So profiles are just data tables with some of the um, settings of all the other uh, various sections uh, pre-populated. So when you run um, any of the decals uh, in this profile setting, it will load all of the necessary textures and parameters in below. Um, and the only idea behind um, having a profile is you can quickly um, go back to a, a sort of default template to, to start from rather than have to remember exactly how you did it. So for example, if I wanted to, um, here we go, I'll put a exposed brick uh, profile. Here we go, I've got it here, I can load the profile and uh, it's there ready to go and I can change it as I see fit. And I'll show in another video how to uh, create your own settings as well. Set scale with profile will just change the scale to whatever the scale the profile uses uh, as opposed to the existing scale. If you turn that off, it just won't change the scale. The core settings, most importantly, is the mask format. This actually selects a different type of material depending. Uh, they're generally in order of cheap to expensive, uh, but essentially the, the basic masks, obviously the less, the more basic you go, uh, the, the less it's going to, uh, or less instructions it's going to use, so it's more performant and procedural, a little more expensive, obviously far more flexible. Uh, you can see the one we're using here is actually a procedural and a second texture, um, so we're using a, a procedural mask here with, uh, you know, two textures. We have the bricks and we have the plaster. The base mask can be changed. Uh, often you'll see in the profiles I use this mask. Uh, this is a good mask to uh, as, as a sort of general base, but it will really depend on what you're doing. If you're using a very basic uh, format, you may end up using a very specific mask for that. Opacity uh, is obviously the opacity itself of the decal. I'll put that back to one. Remove stretching. This is really if uh, you're fine with decals, particularly if they're on corners. Uh, or on sides, you might experience this where they stretch. Uh, you can obviously try and fine tune your decal if I um, like, a, you know, get it as close as possible. I know sometimes uh, there's just inevitable overlap, maybe if it's uh, on a corner. So, remove stretching will just remove any perpendicular surfaces. This is uh, this does require a lot more instructions, so uh, I would only do this if you actually need to. This is why it's not always on by default. If you find uh, you know you're in the middle, here we go. If we put this in the middle of the wall, we really don't need to use it in this case. So I wouldn't I wouldn't do that because it's just going to run a slightly more expensive material. You'll see some sometimes it says read only. When it's read only, you can't change it. It's there for information. In the case of this, it is a scalable, uh, uh, scalable format we're using. Uh, I have just, um, I should have put, the, put that on. Here we go. Oh, there we go. That's good enough. So here we are. I want to scale this decal. It scales quite lovely. Uh, there you go. So it doesn't actually stretch a decal. It will actually scale the mask across and you can scale it in as well. So this is really useful. You're trying to cover uh, areas that aren't square. 
Um, you can turn it off, you can override it. Of course, if you override it um, for a decal like this, it's not ideal because that's just going to then allow you to stretch a decal. That's not what we would want with a decal like this. Sort order is obviously uh, just a sort order. If you have more than one decal overlapping, you can just choose which one you want to show on the front by using a higher number. In the primary textures, these should all be fairly straightforward. You can see for this decal, uh, the brickwork itself is the primary texture. I only use albedos and normals. I don't use roughness, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, AO, um, metallics, um, or, or any of the other kind of te texture masks because I wanted to keep this very cheap. You can, uh, you can um, update this, of course, if you wanted to add your own masks. I just, uh, I was trying to make this performant as possible and I really didn't feel like the extra masks added a lot of upside versus the extra computing that needed. Uh, roughness, etc. can be manually changed as a whole number. Um, I may do a video to show you how to add additional masks if that's something that's important. So roughness, brightness, normal strength, obviously the tint, all these should be straightforward. Uh, you can play around with these. Tiling obviously would just be the size uh, of, the, of the tile itself along as shifting horizontal and vertical and rotating as well. Uh, the uh, albedo, this only works on the remap. Uh, the remap is a specific function used for puddles. I will just quickly show you how, how this works. Uh, we're just going to push this down here. We're going to make a quick puddle. Let's also show you how easy it is actually just to quickly make decals. So I'm going to drop a decal on. I'll rotate that to 90 degrees. I don't think I've done a good job of putting that in the right place. Uh, that's because, here we go. That's okay. So we'll go to our, uh, we'll go to our format here. We'll do an advanced puddle uh, and we'll load that. Uh, right, now actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a concrete floor. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, typically if you have a puddle that's on um, you know, dirt or mud, the puddle itself is unlikely to be clear. Uh, you can see this actually doesn't look too bad here. Uh, I'm actually going to make this puddle a little bit bigger. So you can change, by the way, you can just change the, the scale, obviously, of the decal, of course. And it will adjust. So I've got a puddle here, don't mind. Uh, the colour is not too bad either, actually. I could obviously tinker with the colour if I wanted it to look a little muddy. But often on sidewalks, asphalt, um, a lot of those scenes, the puddles will be clear. So if I actually go down, now I'm using um, this remap, uh, procedural remap format here. Uh, I can actually just select this button. And what this will do is this will just remove, uh, you know, the uh, color tint itself, which it actually just doesn't load in uh, an albedo mask. Um, and then of course, when we do that, you get uh, a nice, nice kind of looking puddle and you might find that again for city scenes etc where you don't want uh, the puddles to look muddy or you want them to be clear okay uh, so the primary textures we've done that secondary texture exactly the same as the primary um, the only real difference here is you'll see with all these um, following subsequent sections uh, you'll get also this read only which will tell you how uh, whether these sections are enabled either with a limited capacity or not applicable you can hover over The text and it will tell you what they mean But really this is just so you know where, where there's categories that are not applicable You just don't need to change uh, for that particular uh, mask format. You're sorry decal format you're using none of these uh, are going to make a difference because it doesn't use it so in the case of uh, again this one uh, the procedure remap it doesn't use the adjust mask section so you just don't need to change anything so you can just use this as an indicator obviously the mask tiler here you can see is enabled so these these will actually make a difference so I'm going to oh I've moved the whole block but let's just put that back there we go I should have uh, put my um should have put my uh, snapping grid on uh, okay, let's just go back to a decal here. So the adjust mask, this is uh, again for, let's find a decal that uses it. I believe a sludge stain will actually use this. We'll load that in. We'll just rotate that 90 degrees so we can see this. You see this from the demo video. Uh, if you've watched that already, I think I show some of this. 
So if you want, uh, this is a, a much cheaper version of a, a slightly more pre uh, procedural style decal. Uh, it's certainly not as powerful as using proper procedural formats. So this one doesn't, it uses a basic format with a, an adjuster. The adjuster here just takes a dirt mask. Um, and what you can then do, you can see the changes going on live here. So you can actually just change the, uh, the, the power uh, the density of the mask and the contrast so you can get a certain effect you like. And you'll see it's generally following the shape of this base mask. Um, in this case you can actually change this base mask uh, to some uh, different shape if you want to do that as well. This is a fairly cheap, uh, fairly cheap operation um, so a fairly good one to use. Okay, the mask tiler, so uh, this is uh, pretty straightforward. This will just tile the mask, so we'll go back to our uh, exposed brick. Uh, I need to re-rotate that back around. So for this one, if for some reason uh, you wanted to uh, use more of the mask space or change the position of decal within the mask, the adjust mask, well, sorry, I beg your pardon, the mask tiler will do that. So you can see it's enabled, so it works on this one. Um, and you can sort of tile it around, uh, change its scale uh, within the mask. So you may want to, you know, use the full width and um, height of the mask as well. So you can just move it around and uh, play around with that there. Linear fade. So linear fade works for the, uh, let's find, uh, let's find one that uses it. So the, the two fade options here, one's, uh, one's simple, one's advanced. Uh, we're just going to load that profile in as well. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to pull it down here. Uh, you can see I've got, I could either try and push it in closer to the wall, which I probably would do like that, um, or I can press my remove stretching. Uh, now obviously if this was the actual shape of the wall, I would probably uh, drag it out a bit and make it a bit bigger. Uh, I'm not going to get too worried about that right now. You can see that actually on this one it did stretch. Uh, it did actually stretch the, um, the the dirt slightly. So I can actually go into my adjust mask. Uh, uh, beg your pardon, not my adjust mask, my mask tiler. Uh, that is in, in, enabled here. So I can actually just take my horizontal tile and, uh, sorry, wrong one, my horizontal scale and I can just put that back to how I wanted it. The um, the, uh, the advanced version will just scale itself. It won't actually, you won't need to do that, uh, which uses a, the procedural one. So linear fade in this case, you can see it's now enabled. Uh, there's really only two settings we've got. We can either change the angle. You're rarely gonna need to do this because you don't want the angle to probably match the direction that the decal's already working in. And then there's also the fade strength. So the fade strength, just really how strong you want that fade to be. Uh, you can also see with this one that I, not only am I using a linear fade function, I am actually using it with a specific fade mask because I found that got better results. Lastly, one of my uh, sort of favorite areas to play in, in, you know, with this tool is the procedural stuff. So again, we'll put, um, we're, we're just going to stick with the wall uh, for now, just because I think it really sh showcases it um, pretty well. Is this, uh, is this how we had it? This is, I think, how we had it. So, um, or actually the puddles work quite well on this as well. I'll maybe just quickly cover both. So here, uh, the noise contrast, uh, this is gonna show how, uh, you know, how, um, really how tight you want these uh, layers to be. And uh, this is on a two layer uh, format. I'll show you on the one layer with a puddle in a minute. So this helps in terms of how much I want to blend the plaster. Um, to the main wall itself uh, and also to the brick. I've got noise strength. So the noise strength again is how deep I really want, how much I want to expose the brick versus how much I want to limit it to the plaster. Um, the, no the noise normal strength itself you can see is how how sort of deep I'm going to make the entire thing. So you can see if I bring that number down it really makes it feel quite deep in the wall or I can make it feel a lot more shallow. Uh, here as well. Now of course you can change the normal 
um, on the plaster itself, uh, you can do that up here. So normal strength here, if I wanted that to look deeper or a little softer, I can just control that independently. And the same with the brick. Uh, this is uh, the procedural mask is actually doing the whole, uh, you know, the whole thing together. Uh, I can rotate the mask. Uh, you see, it won't rotate the tiles. It will just rotate the mask. So it gives you a lot of variation there. And then the way this actually works is it takes uh, a noise mask. And again, you can replace this with other masks. I've got a few in this pack, but it takes this noise mask and actually uh, applies it back over itself. So you get a variant A and a variant B. Um, so that gives you uh, a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of how uh, you can play around with it. So you can see when I actually make the tiling um, bigger, I zoom out essentially. So you can see you get much more sort of detailed effect. That could look good, for example, a wall that had been hit with shrapnel or something like that. And then when I zoom out, you get, uh, sorry, zoom into lower close to zero, you get these bigger, bigger blobs. Now, if I do that on tiling B, you'll see the same thing. This is, you can see more of a, has a bigger impact. This is really more the sort of master layer. So this one will zoom out. Um, tiling A, you can do both, you can do one. Um, so this, this tiling B variant is really when you're gonna want either bigger gaps or smaller gaps. This is gonna drive a lot of that. And then A is really gonna give you some of the details. And of course you can move these things along um, to get different types of uh, different types of uh, patterns and effects, uh, and it's pretty nice. You really can end up with as many variations as you need. So that's really uh, an overview of uh, how the tool works. Uh, there's a lot more um, you know you can do with it than I'm showing. I will actually just quickly show you some of this with the puddle. I think I said a word. Uh, so if we, uh, you know, what we'll do here is we will. Um, I haven't selected it. So I need to select it. I will leave this color on. Um, and if we just quickly zoom out and have a look at this uh, procedural down here, you can see very similar to what I had before. I can change, you know, the noise strength. And in this case, what you get is the difference, difference between the actual wet puddle itself and just some of the dampness, uh, the normal strength, how steep or shallow do I really want the, uh, the concrete going into the, the water itself. Uh, obviously noise contrast. All these things uh, play really nicely together. I can rotate and I can do my, my variants as well. So I can create all kinds of different, uh, different types of patterns, uh, depending on what effect, uh, what I'm really trying to go after. Uh, so yeah, so that's a sort of a fairly speedy overview of the tool and what everything does. Um, I don't have an official Discord channel or anything. I made this as a personal tool. I'm just making it free uh, for others. I thought it might be useful, but I will try and keep an eye on any of the comments, uh, you know, for these videos and uh, I'll try and help out uh, if you have any questions and maybe record a few other videos for if I get uh, questions that I can help with. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much. Uh, there's a link in the description to download the tool and uh, have fun with it. Thanks so much. Bye.